Hey there, mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode 28. I'm Emily McDermott, and I am here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. I hope you listened to last week's conversation with Danny Watson, all about intentional design. While you may not see me in a home goods anytime soon, I do feel more confident about purchasing home decor in alignment with my values and how I want my home to feel. This week, we are talking about the source of a ton of angst from my mama friends, paper. If we aren't drowning in laundry, side note, hopefully episode 26 on laundry is helping you on that front. We are drowning in paper. If you are at home right now, I'm guessing if you look around, you may see piles of paper, mail that hasn't been opened still on the kitchen counter, kids' school papers that are half sticking out of their backpacks, artwork strewn about, covering the fridge or in random piles because you don't know what to do with it. Emily, do you have a hidden camera set up in my house? No, I promise, but I know that paper is stressing you out. And today I'm going to offer you my no-fail paper processing routine around three main categories of paper that my mama struggle with. Mail, kids' school papers, and kids' artwork. This is going to be super tactical. So what do you say? Grab that notebook and pen, and let's dive into today's episode. Hey there, Mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home, calendar, and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Hey, mama. Yep, you. I see you doing dishes, folding that laundry, or going on a much-needed walk. I really hope that you are enjoying what I'm sharing here, and this is making an impact on your decluttering journey. If it is, there's only a few ways that I can know. You're always welcome to join my free Facebook group. We do decluttering challenges every other week with some cool prizes. So you can always go to tinyurl.com forward slash moms overcoming overwhelm to join. Or you could share your favorite episode on social media. That would be great. But honestly, between you and me, I have a goal to reach 100 five-star reviews in Apple Podcasts between now and April 1st. Eek! And when I do, I'm going to have a special giveaway that you don't want to miss. So if you have 30 seconds to spare, it would mean the world to me if you would do one of those three things. Thanks so much, Mama. Oh boy, this is going to be a juicy episode. Well, maybe not juicy, but one that hopefully won't give you a paper cut. Paper. We need it. Yet it ends up everywhere. Sort of like glitter for those mamas with the super crafty creative kiddos. Am I right? I find it interesting that when it comes to some things coming into our home all the time, like food, we put it away right then and there because we don't want spoiled milk or funky smelling fruit or whatever the case may be. But since paper doesn't spoil, we just leave it wherever it lands. And we know that visual clutter is registered in our brain as undone tasks. So let's do ourselves a favor and tackle this paper once and for all, shall we? I will say it now, and I will keep saying it probably as long as I have this podcast and beyond. You need to have a system around your stuff. Throwing something on a countertop or the floor is not a system. You need some place to put the paper that requires action, an inbox of some kind. And if possible, it's great for your spouse to have one as well. I will link to the one I use, but honestly, something simple that keeps the paper in one place is all you need. So when it comes to our first category of mail, let's think about your system. How often do you check your mail? 
Is it overflowing every time you empty the mailbox, so much so that you wonder how the mail carrier stuffed more in there? Ask me how I know. You need a routine around when you get the mail. I like to tie it to when I'm getting my oldest son from the bus stop. Once you have a time set, then you need to know where the mail goes after you touch it. The answer is not the random table in your entryway. The answer is not the kitchen counter. Our goal is that we touch the mail as few times as humanly possible. So here's what I do. Upon entering my kitchen, mail in hand, I see what is junk or something that doesn't require my attention. If it's something I need to unsubscribe from, like catalogs, mailing lists, credit card solicitations, even phone books if those still exist, or magazines, I put them into my physical inbox in my kitchen for action. I have linked to several resources in the show notes to help you unsubscribe from these categories of mail, as well as the other categories that we will talk about today. If you receive a bill or something that requires action, those go in your inbox as well. If it's your spouse who needs to take the action on something, put it in their inbox. And here's the catch. You guessed it. You need to set up a time in your day to review and process what is in that inbox. So although I'm putting mail in the proper place, recycling or my inbox, when my oldest comes through the door from the bus stop, I wait until the evening to actually review and process it. That might mean unsubscribing, seeing if I could pay a bill online rather than in hard copy, or just simply paying the bill or putting something on my calendar or scanning something like an explanation of benefits or some other notice that I get in the mail. When it comes to paper, if you're processing something with sensitive information that isn't going directly into the recycle bin, you need a way to dispose of it safely and properly. You can scan it using a scanner, a link to the one we use, which can scan several documents at a time, or you can simply take a photo with your phone and keep it in a cloud-based system. I use Evernote, but there are plenty of other options out there. I also use an Amazon basic shredder, which does the job well for us for shredding. It's small, compact, and doesn't jam often, if ever. So now that we have the mail handled, let's move on to our second category, kids' schoolwork. This is where our sentimentality can cause a literal paper jam. Remember, we are always going back to what is most important to us. And I'm sure your child is a genius and did really well on that worksheet the other day. But in my humble opinion, and as someone who is trying to help you cut down on your paper clutter, you do not need to keep everything your kid brings home from school. So let's imagine that your child is walking through the door after school. What is the system around their stuff? Where is the backpack going? Is it left on the floor until after they go to sleep or even worse until the next morning? Let me share my process for my preschooler and first grader. I realize that older kids can take more responsibility in this process, so you can make changes to your system accordingly. When my boys come home from school, they are having lunch in the case of my preschooler or having a snack in the case of my first grader. So while they're eating their lunch or snack, I go through their bags. If it is a worksheet, a simple coloring page, or something I'm certain I don't want to keep, I usually recycle it immediately. If I think they want to show their dad, then I put it in my kitchen inbox and we look at it over dinner. If it requires action, like a flyer or reminder, it goes in the inbox as well. Then after dinner, we can show my husband what they did and it goes back into the kitchen inbox for processing after they go to bed. If my kids wrote a story or did something showing their skill and creativity, I'll scan it and put it in Evernote. If I fill out a school form or put an important date on my calendar, then I'll process the paper accordingly, either recycling, shredding, or putting papers in the backpack to be returned to the teacher. Now, school papers and artwork and crafts can sometimes be intermixed since our kids are being creative at school, as well as camp and so on. So I'd like to finish up our episode by sharing our last category, kids' artwork and crafts. When the artwork or craft comes in the door, it is usually put directly in my inbox. I rarely recycle something right away, unless it's a simple coloring sheet, for example. But after my kiddos have shown my husband what they made, I give them a choice. They can put their artwork on a cork board in their room. If it's full, they have to decide to take something down. This is using the container concept we spoke about in episode six. I have linked to a video in the show notes so you can see the cork board in action. Also for any crafts, it depends on the size. 
but my kids do have a physical treasure box where they can keep some of those smaller things. The same rule applies. Once it's full, then they need to decide what stays and what goes. If they don't decide to hang up the artwork, but I'm concerned they're going to ask about it again, it goes into a hamper we don't use in my closet called art purgatory. Well, that's what we call it. Every few months I go through it to decide what would be kept, what would be scanned into Evernote and recycled, or what will be thrown out in the case of those random crafts. Again, I've linked to a video you can watch about this in the show notes. We keep a very limited number of items in a file folder. Pick a physical limitation for your kid's artwork that you keep. It may be an accordion folder where every section is for one year, for example. There are also companies such as Archive or Keepy that will make framed mosaics or books of your kid's artwork, which I've linked in the show notes. Well, whew, there you have it. I know this was a lot, but I hope it was helpful to you. Check out the show notes today because all the resources I mentioned are there. So to recap, paper does not need to be your nemesis. You need a system around paper, specifically mail, kids' schoolwork, and kids' artwork. The system will include what you're recycling, what you're scanning, or what you are physically keeping. No matter what, make sure you have a physical limitation for what you are keeping using the container rule. You can do this. I hope this episode blessed you. If so, please make sure to share it with a friend or join my free Facebook group at tinyurl.com forward slash moms overcoming overwhelm. Next week, we'll be talking with Desiree Endress from the amazing podcast, Minimalish, on how we can let our kids be creative without freaking out about the messes they make. I'll see you next week. Bye for now. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact, but 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. An Apple podcast, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.